Hello, and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I'm available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. In this episode, I am going to continue to talk about lambdas. I have talked about lambdas an awful lot over the course of these videos, but I really want to kind of bring this home in, in, a, in a weird kind of way. And uh, this definitely will not be the last episode that where I'll talk about lambdas. But in this particular one, I would like to discuss uh, what exactly can a lambda capture and what we can do with that. So for these examples, I will be using a local build of Compiler Explorer that does allow me to actually execute the code. So in the most simple sense, um, a lambda can look like this. This is a lambda with no captures, no parameters, and automatically deduced return value of type void. And if we do this, it now has a return value of type int. So we can call our lambda, return 5 from it, and we can see here we're getting 5 moved into EIX, and we are getting um, 5 returned from main, exactly as we would have expected. Now, this lambda capture can be anything. So we can say i equals 5, and here say return i. So it can be any expression. And then the question is, what exactly is an expression? Well, a lambda is an expression. It's one of many things that, that is in the language. So we could here capture a new lambda that returns 5, like this. And now our return can be like that. So we are getting our local lambda, executing it, returning the return value, which is 5. Or if we had left it in this case, we are returning the actual lambda from the function. And here now we need to invoke the lambda that was returned from the lambda, and we get 5 returned from main. Now, the obvious question is, where is this going? Well, since we can capture lambdas, that means we can capture effectively anything. So we can create a struct in here that has its own values. So we are now inside the lambdas that is being captured by the lambda. And we can return an instantiation of this object of type s and immediately invoke our lambda inside the capture block. Now our i here is an object of type s. And when we invoke our lambda, we're now getting an object of type s. And if we wanted to return 5 still from main, we needed to do dot vel here. And that's getting back this vel. So now we can have a lambda that has code that is called on construction and code that is called on destruction. So I am currently executing this, but I'm not showing any of the output. Let's go ahead and put that down here. And so we can here make a destructor for our object of type S. And now we can see destroyed has been called. And in fact, we see destroyed has been called twice. And that's interesting. Let's figure out why. So we are getting an object of type S from our call to the lambda. Yes, so that is returning a copy, which is why we're getting s called twice. Uh, we're getting s's destructor called twice. So let's go ahead and comment out our return value. The default return value for main is zero. So now we can see this destroyed. And that is all because our lambda now has an object inside its capture block that is something that we are managing the lifetime of. And we've got this call to our destructor being printed. So let's go ahead and put in a couple of other things. So we've got our created, we've got our destroyed, and let's go ahead and put in a copied. And we're not getting any copied here, but this lets us really come to the realization that lambdas are in fact objects that have lifetime just like anything else. So if I make a copy of this lambda, I'm making a copy of all of its captures, which includes the struct s, which is defined in the lambda that was created inside the capture block of the lambda and then we have to copy it and we get two objects destroyed. So what we have created here is a way to have lambdas that have their own destructors. 
And it's something that I've wanted to do for a long time, but as I make this video, I realized that I had no real end goal. I just wanted to prove that it was possible to make a lambda with a destructor, and I have done that now. So if you have any use cases for where you could see actually putting to use something like this, uh, perhaps some sort of function guard or something so that when a, a lambda goes out of scope it does some sort of cleanup, I, I don't even know. Um, leave a comment on YouTube here and be sure to subscribe to my videos and thanks for watching.